And what do you think Dr. Seuss does, Samira? He writes books. He writes books. And what do we call a person who writes the books? Mahira? The author. The author. Who's the person who draws the pages in the book? Asel? The illustrator. The illustrator. He is an author and he is an illustrator. All week we're going to be talking about green eggs and ham, the cat in the hat, the foot book, all of our favorite things and we like to talk about. Wacky Wednesday. Oh, and I like Wacky Wednesday. In the Dr. Seuss unit, we covered science curriculum, math, reading, writing, and um, listening skills. He has written many different books. All right, let's look at the inside of our big book. All right, let's read this sentence. Let's look at the red box by number one. We could put on tall, silly hats. Now we have four choices over here. We have the foot book, green eggs and ham, the cat in the hat, and the sleep book. Which book do you think we could put on tall, silly hats? Who knows? The sleep book. Justice? Asel, can you help him? Um, the cat in the hat. Oh, the cat in the hat. So we're going to put a number one in that box. Number two, we could eat green eggs and ham. Which book would that be? <laughs> I, know. I know, I know. Jayden? Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. Let's put a number two in that box. What do you think another reason is why we like these silly Dr. Seuss books? What does he like to do in his books? Tell us many different kinds of Aiden. He, rhyming words. Rhyming words. And we've talked about rhyming words. Can anybody tell me one rhyming word? Nadavia? Hat and bat. All right. Hat and bat. All right. One more, Kayla. Um. Uh. <gasps> diamond. Time. Okay. One nonsense word and one regular word. So Dr. Seuss, put your hands down. Dr. Seuss books, he writes a lot of rhyming words, and we've talked a lot this year at reading about rhyming words. Right, let's look at the back of our page. Let's look at our beginning sounds at the beginning of our word, of our cat. What letter does bat start with? B. Uh, Charity? B. B. How about cat? What's the beginning sound of cat? Now let's look at the bottom. Look at this guy, Ming and Zip. They have a problem. The problem says that Ming and Zip both want to read the Cat in the Hat book, but there is only one book in our class. What can we do if we only have one book in our room? Jaden? You share books. Oh, they could share a book, all right, with a friend. You could read it all day. Would you be able to share with your friend if you had the book all day? Um, and you can, share you can take turns, or you can take turns. Oh, you could take turns, like Jaden said. What else could we do, Nadavia? Um, one person could read a page and then the other one. Okay. Amani? You can read together. Okay. And Kayla? And you can, one person can have a turn, then you can give it to the other person, and then again and again and again and again and again. again. Huh? Zarya, come here. What's another thing we could do, Zarya? Besides sharing. I think take. We could go to the library, and we could do what at the library? Be quiet. Oh, we have to be quiet in the library. What else we could do? I have one book. You can put another and cat in the hat book. Look for another cat in the hat book. So then we could have how many books? Two. 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 So you could have one and your friend, friend. could have the other and one. And then, Kayla, could we share? And both of us share and be good friends? And a 
You just snatch it from somebody that's not nice. That's right, that's not that's not a nice thing to do. That wouldn't be a good sharing friend, would it? If Natalia wanted this book and I snatched it from her, I should give it back to her. And yep. then she would be happy. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, let's get ready to do our story. In a math segment, we would um, do our math journals and we would do whatever uh, curriculum-based materials that we needed to cover during that se segment. Um, I kind of move around all over the room. We might sit down and work with one individual child. Um, some of the students that have special needs, Ms. Grznowski sits with them and make sure that they are on task and accomplishing that task it may take them a little bit longer but they're still finishing that task. We use the approach of um, the co-teachers teaching and I'm supporting, a supporting role because my children can complete the academics in the co setting. They don't need a lot of modifications for academics. So a lot of the supports of the academics that they can accomplish, they can complete like their gender, general education peers. But in the co-taught room, I'm supplying all the behavior supports and the modifications to the work that they need to be completed, whether it be extended time, shortening their assignments, or color coding what they need to be done, or providing visual supports. Now that we finished our book, One Fish, Two Fish, we're going to match numbers to number words. What number is this? Six. What number word is this? What Six. Number? Okay, we're going to match six to six. All right, we have the numbers one through ten. We're going to read the number word and match it to the number for all of our numbers. When you're done matching the number word with the number, we're going to use our paper and we're going to write the number and then the number word from one to ten. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Kayla? Yes. Yes, we will all have partners. We're going to go to our seats. Listen for your table. Are you ready? Yes. Table one, return to your seat. Table two, go to your seat. Your bag is in your crown box. Table three, go to your seat. She's got the numbers. Get some more numbers. Timmy, let's separate. Look for it. Oh no, what happened? All right, all we need to do is separate the numbers and the number words. Divide them up. Are you being a good partner? How are you going to be a good partner? Then you have to what? Share. Okay, so one. Match. Timmy, match. Read, Timmy, read. What's it say? Read to me. Read. Wait, Read, Timmy. I need to tie Andrew, did you get yours out yet, buddy? Uh, no, I, I need to tie Look, something. separate like Timmy. Mm -hmm. One, two, two. How do I spell it? Two, three. T O no T W. No, look what I did. One, two, three. Read. Read. Yes, you do. Timmy. Read. Good girl. What's this, Andrew? Your turn, Andrew. Partner. One, but are we going to do these on? Nope. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. What's this say? Read. Good boy. Timmy, your turn. Are you ready for a break? Mm -hmm. Okay. Five wall pushups. Go. One of my students uses a sensory diet where he uses. Um, wall push-ups and a um, regimen of running short lengths and a pattern routine running of five times and this helps regulate him and keep him focused. A 
is a variety of pl behavior plans within the classroom. Behavior changes, it's um, always changing from one day to the next, from moment to moment. Behavior plan may be visual supports. Behavior plan may be um, working within a period of time of five segments or 10 segments and they earn a break, they earn stickers, and I try to drive their reward for whatever we're doing by what their needs are. We are going to do a goldfish graph, okay? You each have a bag of goldfish and you're going to pour them out into your plate and the first thing you're going to do is sort them in your plate. Put all of the colors together. Then we're going to put them on, we're gonna count them up and write how many reds we have and how many orange we have and how many green and purple and yellow. Your, paper, your goldfish are at your seat and so is your plate. So we are ready for you to go back to your seats and take them out and then we will go through the graph, okay? Give me five. If you are finished, your paper is under your pencil basket. Take it out. Write your name down at the bottom. Okay, now listen. Count how many reds you have. Write that in the first row. Mm -hmm. Write how many reds you have right there. You didn't get any red. Okay, give me five. We do a lot of reading in the classroom where they're reading and following along with us as well. So that, um, and plus they get that enthusiasm of, of other people's love for reading. You know, when they're, a, when they're able to see other people come in and read to them, they know that it's not just, it's not, it's not just work. It's something that they can enjoy and they can see that, that love and enjoyment from other people. The sun did not shine. It was too wet to play. So we sit in the house all that cold, cold day. I sat there with Sally. We sat there, we too. And I said, how I wish we had something to do. Look at me, look at me, look at me now. It is fun to have fun, but you have to know how. I can hold up these books and the fish on a rake. I can hold up the toy ship and a little toy man. And look, with my tail, I can hold a red fan. The writing activity was to focus on their favorite Dr. Seuss book. Um, in doing that, they were given the sentence starter, my favorite book is, and then they were to finish that. The students use a self-assessment rubric to um, assess their writing. Um, with that, they were able to check to see if they had written a complete sentence. Had they added the capitalization at the beginning? Did they do the punctuation? Did they skip spaces between their words? Um, that way, they were accomplishing the task and independently assessing themselves before they brought it to one of the adults in the classroom to have it graded. We're going to do a writing about our picture and about the book that we have chosen. We're going to write, my favorite Dr. Seuss book is, okay? And you have it right there. You have Kayla's was the cat in the hat. Mahira did the Wacky Wednesday, and Allison did One Fish, Two Fish, okay? So these are the books that you've chosen. Dr. Seuss's name is right here for you to spell, and the title of the book is right here for you to spell. The only thing you're going to have to do is write your sentence. Now remember, our sentence starts with a what? Capital. 
a capital letter. Thank you. And what does it end with? Uh, um, lowercase. Capital. 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 What kind of punctuation does it end with? A period. It would be really sad. Well, you want to glue it on. Put glue all over the back of the white paper. Okay. This should be a what? Look at the look at the book. My favorite book is. And then what goes at the end? Now we've written our first sentence, okay? We've written that what our favorite book is. Now we need to write our second sentence, and our second sentence is going to be about why we like that book. Kayla, what was your favorite part of The Cat in the Hat? They had a lot of fun. What part of Wacky Wednesday did you like, Mahira? The candy cane on the table. <gasps> the candy cane on the table. That was a funny part, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now we're going to work on our second sentence. I, I like and tell me what you like. Go. No. All right. Write that on your paper. Copy. Oh, my favorite book is. So we're going to write first. Write first. Hey. Miss Krednowski, um, I think part of her strength is being able to shuffle from one type of a strategy to another and you don't even really notice that she's doing it. It, it comes with automaticity because she has studied so well over the years and is so highly gifted, I believe, in the area of expertise within special education students. She treats them all fairly and yet she treats them all differently as far as the supports that she needs in the classroom to make them effective. And so you might not even realize that she's changing strategies, but she does so with ease. And that's what makes her the strong teacher that she is. One. One. Two, three. All right, let's look at our checklist. Did you write on the lines? Did you leave spaces between your words? You did? Did you like a, a word and a space and a word and a space? Or did yours all squishy together? Yeah, we need to write a sentence. We need to have a word and a space. Okay? Don't forget, use your spacing finger.